if you go to first kings chapter uh, 22 uh, you see the story unfolding about how the two kings were sitting there and they're talking together they're chatting and all the prophets are prophesying basically mm -hmm. prophesying lies and um the one king's like, oh, you know, I know a prophet, but he's always giving me bad information. I hate this guy. And um, he literally says it in um, 1 Kings chapter 22, and it says in Jehoshaphat, in verse 7, said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Father God, let us inquire of the truth and not of a lie. And I just speak this in Jesus' name. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, <laughs> Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. He's like, Dude, you shouldn't say that. So the king says, go get him, bring him in here. And if you notice all of the prophets in verse 12, all the prophets prophesied saying, go do this thing. The Lord is going to deliver. <laughs> the messenger uh, that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him saying, behold, now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, um, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. And uh, he basically tells him one thing, and the king's like, uh, dude, I've told you, tell me the truth. You ever just go to somebody and you're like, tell me the truth. I don't want to hear a lie. I want to hear the truth. I can handle it. I don't know if we can, saints. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> Here's Jesus. This is the truth. How many can handle it? And um, so he tells them the truth, and uh, he don't want to hear the truth. So if you start in 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 19, and he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven, heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth, and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Now, saints, if you think about that, if you read it and you really break it down, you're going to know that God is not a liar, and he's not going to cause anyone to lie, but he will allow a lie to be spoken, uh, and this is why. So let's go to first, I'm sorry, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, this will all come together for you. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse um, 1. Now we, were, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth, exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. 
whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Here we go. And for this cause, God, Yahuwah himself, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Saints, it's time for the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, to wake up. It's clear in the word of God what's going on. Okay, we cannot deny the facts any longer. If we don't want the truth, the Lord will give us up to our own delusions. If you want to do things your way, the Lord will say, hey, hot dog, have at it. Here's the bun. This is where the rubber meets the road. Saints, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Those desires will change when you are truly born again and you have a new heart. Preacher said it really good yesterday. The man that's dying of heart disease and needs a new heart, until he says yes to the surgeon that's standing there with a the new heart wanting to put it in his chest, he can believe all day long that the surgeon can do the operation. He can believe all day long that the heart's going to save him. But until he says yes to the surgery, to the surgeon, and to the new heart, the surgeon opens up that chest cavity, takes that old heart out, and puts the new one back in, sews him up, and there we go. Until your heart changes, you're still going to want what you want. And the Lord said, continue, you want to continue, you want to roll on wagon wheel, you want to keep on going that way, hot dog? He said, I'm going to send him a strong delusion. So if you see it in the host of heaven standing before the Lord and they're having a conversation, the Lord will allow these things because his will will be done on this earth. So tonight I'm praying with you saints that you will not receive a strong delusion, that you will not be deceived in any manner. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over you to hide and protect and keep you. I declare and decree that the whole suit of armor of God is protecting you and keeping you, but you've got to put it on for yourselves. The girdle of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet being shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, you have to take up that shield of faith that you will quench the fiery darts of the enemy because the enemy's coming after you and me. If you're a target, you're a target because you're doing the work of God and you're doing the will of God. You're, you're not going to have a whole lot of trouble if, if you're just rocking and rolling and doing your own thing and you're living for the enemy. And you can be calling the Lord, um, oh, he's my Lord, he's my God, he's my King, he's my Savior. But guess what? He has to be your master. He has to be your Lord over your life. You can't Lord your own life anymore. Um, so... After you pick up that shield of faith, you got to pick up that sword of the Spirit, which is the spoken word of God. The spoken word of God. You can sit there and think it all day long, saints, until you speak it out. You can read it all day long. You can think it all day long. You got to speak it out. You got to pick it up and speak it. You have to receive the helmet of salvation. And you have to continuously pray. And the spirit and, and, and be led of the Lord. You have to have the whole armor of God, not just one piece. You can't leave any of the pieces out. You know, there's a reason that there's a whole suit of armor. So you put that whole suit of armor on, you're ready to fight. And you're not going to have delusional thoughts. You are literally going to give your life up for the Lord's use. And because the Lord is using you, because the Lord is utilizing you on this earth as his hands, his feet, and his voice, it's going to be God's will and not your will. 
if you stay in the Word of God, you're not going to be deceived. If you stay in the Word of God and you walk those old paths and you walk the way of the righteousness and the way that the Lord has sent you and determined beforehand for you to walk therein, you're not going to be sent a strong delusion. So if you see in the Old Testament in 1 Kings chapter 22, the Lord allowed the lying spirit to go forth and lie and deceive the king. The king was already deceived. He was already delusional because he disobeyed God. And in 2 Thessalonians, it's so simple. If you just will read it and let it sink in, and see, a lot of times we'll read this stuff, but it doesn't sink in. Saints, you're not going to be deceived. You're not going to be given a strong delusion if you believe the truth and you love the truth. There's a reason folks don't like some people, because they represent the truth. And again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Why? Verse 12, 2 Thessalonians 2, 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Saints, we can't walk around and say that Jesus is Lord and we're not doing what he tells us to do. You're complaining. You're walking into the sanctuary of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings without a praise on your lips and thanksgiving in your heart. You're walking into the sanctuary on Sunday mornings and you're complaining. And saints, if we're complaining, we're, we're going to be deceived through those complaints. Do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be held harmless, blames, blameless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked nation among whom he shine his lights in the world, holding forth. We hold forth the, the word of God, the word of faith, knowing that we have not labored in vain, neither run in vain. So, saints, I just want to encourage you tonight because, again, there's strong word in here that we're going to be convicted. The Holy Spirit convicts you. The Holy Spirit does not condemn you. If you're feeling condemned, that is not God. The Holy Spirit convicts so that we can repent and we can come right back to this word. We have an advocate with the Father, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our faults, he is just and faithful. He is just and faithful. He will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Saints, that's us. That's me and you. This is a daily walk. They might be saved. They receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. Saints, you're not true. You're not that the deal is not done until you leave this this tent, this bodysuit, the skin that you're in. That's when you're truly saved is when you transition from this life to the next life, which is totally eternity. Um, you know, you can say I'm saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and live like the devil. Somebody's lying. So I'm going to pray with you. Father God, I just praise you and I thank you Lord because the true ecclesia is calling uh, out to you Lord they are worshiping you in spirit and truth Father God and they are living holy lives they're living separated lives Father God I just ask you to continue to show us the truth through your word give us a holy desire Father God for your word give us a holy hunger and thirst after righteousness your word Father God says that we will be filled with if we hunger and thirst after righteousness. Father God, I lift up all of my sisters and brothers, the saints of God that are out there that are trying to do the right thing, that are trying to live right, Father God. Let's stop trying and do. Father God, help us to do the word and not just be hearers only. Father God, I lift up the one that is discouraged today because of the, the sin that keeps recurring. Father God, you are the deliverer. You are the answer to our prayers. Father God, we can live holy in an unholy world. We we can live righteous in an unrighteous world. We can live saved in a sun, unsaved world. Father God, you give us that grace. You give us that mercy. 
through your son Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us and we receive we put on that helmet of salvation because we receive the salvation of the Lord we look up for our redemption draweth nigh and we say yes our help comes from the hills father God I just thank you today and I praise you today for the word of God because yes Lord it is supposed to convict us it is supposed to encourage us and it is supposed to set us on the right path if we get on the wrong path father God thank you for the word thank you for that sharp double-edged sword of the spirit which totally convicts us and calls us back to a right relationship with you father god let each of us be convicted in our hearts let us repent before you in sackcloth and ashes and father god let us know that our sins have been washed away they have been cleansed by the blood of the lamb and we are blood bought we are blood bought children of the most high god let us believe and know the truth father god that yes we have been forgiven and yes we can walk righteously and holy before you in an just an untoward generation Lord, I lift up my brothers and sisters that are depressed. I declare and decree that this depression is not of the Lord. I declare and decree that this depression must leave. This is nothing but a demonic spirit. It is, is um, causing depression, oppression, suppression, compression. And I declare and decree that the blood of the Lamb hides, protects, and covers. And when you call out the name of Jesus, when you call out the name of Jesus, when you call out the name of Jesus, Messiah, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and you apply that blood of the Lamb to your life, that that depression must leave you. That spirit of divination must leave you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, our Messiah, the one that came and bought and paid for us with his own blood. That blood hides us, protects us, and covers us any sin in us any iniquitous generational patterns must fall down and bow at the name of Jesus and Lord I just speak that you will strengthen my brothers and my sisters that they will know who they are in Christ they will know that they have authority they will know that they have the power and the glory residing in them because greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of Shaddai the Almighty we have to say that he is our righteousness and he is our holiness and that he delivers us from the snare of the fowler. He is the one that delivers us. We're to pray one for another. We're to bear ye one another's burdens. And I declare and decree today that you're going to bear somebody else's burdens, but they're going to learn how to bear their own burdens so that they can be strong enough to help you with yours. I declare and decree over you today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Tomorrow has enough evil in itself, saints, that we don't have to worry about it. I bind that worry off you. I bind that fear off you. I bind that anxiety. I bind it up and I command it to leave you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, who is Jesus the Messiah. I lose the spirit of the fear of the Lord upon you. I lose that spirit of the fear of the Lord to come upon you that you would treat God in the way that he has to be treated, not in the way that we want to treat him. Through holiness, through righteousness, through reverential fear. Saints, I declare and decree over you that your mind will be renewed because it will be transformed when you read and you study and you obey the word of God. I, I speak that the word of God, the spirit of the fear of the Lord will come upon you in a greater measure. That you will have that reverential fear of the Lord. A holiness, a separation. You, you won't just enter any old way into God's presence. You will enter into God's presence humbly, trembling, with fear and reverence and honor and respect that is due the one true King of kings and Lord of lords. It's time to get rid of the flip-flop mentality. We can just flip in here, get our blessings, and flop back out. What is that? Saints, declare and decree over your own life. I'm not going to flip-flop back and forth no more. I'm making a decision. Father God, help them make that final decision that they're truly going to allow you 
to, to look into the, the meat of the matter, the heart of the matter. And Lord, I just declare and decree over your saints, over your servants, over all of us that know that you are real, that we're not going to be deceived and we're not going to be sent a strong delusion because we love the truth. We love the truth. We love the truth. And we worship in spirit and in truth. Saints, I loose healing over your mind. I loose the healing virtue of the Lord God Almighty. He said, he is the healer. He sent his word and healed them. There's healing in his wings. Think about that, saints. Christ died on the cross for us, and by his stripes, we are healed. You can't be healed unless you have a problem that needs healing. So let's stop thinking that we're perfect and we're okay and we've arrived because we haven't. None of us have arrived because we're still in this fleshly body. So I declare and decree over you today that the fire of Kadesh Ruach, the Holy Spirit, will just infiltrate your mind, your will, your emotions, but most of all your spirit, man. And that fire will purge, destroy, and cleanse anything that is not of himself the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And you will feel cleansed. You will feel pure. You will feel holy because you've been in the presence of the Lord. I declare and decree over you that the presence of the Lord will come upon you when you completely and totally surrender to him and repent. And then when it's true and it's real and it's right, it's right, it's tight. You ain't going to have to worry about nobody telling you you're saved or you are not going to have to ask. I declare and decree over you that you will know that you know that you know. And you will get up and you will continue to study and read. And you will be a workman, not ashamed. But you will be a workman that is totally right with the Lord, approved of the Lord, because you are studying to show yourself approved. Get in the word, saints. Love the word. Love the truth. You won't have to worry about being sent a strong delusion. You can't be fooled because you're not a fool. And you're not going to act foolish because you know the word of God. If you get discouraged, I declare and decree over you any discouragement that comes your way, you're going to shoot it down with the spoken word of the Lord. You're going to speak the word in season, out of season, when they want to hear it and when they don't. And I just ask the Lord to cause that word to be in you so richly that it flows out of you. And when you smash your thumb with the hammer or you stump your toe at 2 a.m. going to the bathroom instead of cursing and saying all manner of ugly things, you're going to be saying, praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can feel the pain and I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's when you know you're saved. That's when your flesh is really, really, really hurting you, saints. And you're still praising the Lord through it. So I speak over you that you will praise the Lord even when it hurts. You will praise the Lord even when you're discouraged. You'll praise the Lord when you're depressed. I'm not speaking it over you. I'm just saying it's going to come. You're going to have to decide whether you want to accept it and receive it and agree with it. Or whether you're going to cast it down and say, no, not today. I got the Lord of Lords and I got the King of Kings. I love you, saints. God bless you. Do not be sent a strong delusion because you decided not to love the truth. Once you love the truth, you're going to want more and more of the truth. You're going to hunger and thirst after righteousness. So I pray for you today that you hunger and thirst after righteousness because you will be filled. And if you don't want righteousness... You're going to be filled with the opposite. So that's up to you. I declare and decree over you that you will hunger and thirst after righteousness and not the opposite. I love you. God bless you. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over you to hide, protect, and keep you. This is sister with a testimony. And I will not be sent a strong delusion. And I will not be sent a lying spirit. I'm not going to turn tail. I'm going to stay in the word. Pray for me. God bless you. I love you. Saints with a testimony. Have a wonderful day.